Birds are some of the most anatomically varied of all modern animals, and in previous videos on this channel, we have discussed some of the most bizarre and formidable anatomical features they possess. These include the razor-sharp and very powerful taloned feet of raptors, as well as the spurred legs and even spurred wings of species like the spur-winged goose and southern screamer, and even other species that include poison into their bodies, which make them particularly dangerous, such as the hooded Peter Huey pictured here. However, there are many more species of birds out there with equally bizarre and powerful anatomical traits with which to be discussed. So in this video, we're going to be continuing the series looking at avian anatomy and weaponry in detail. Before we dive into this video, however, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this kind of content. Hornbills are a striking family of birds found in tropical and subtropical habitats, particularly rainforests, in areas including Africa and Asia. These often large and colourful birds get their name from their distinctive helmet-like cask on their head, along with having a large and colourful beak, which is used for a variety of different purposes. Because of their large bills and bright coloration, hornbills are often confused with the more familiar toucans, but they are in fact not very closely related, although they do have a somewhat similar lifestyle and ecological niche within their respected habitats. Like toucans, hornbills are largely omnivorous, with a large portion of their diet contributing to eating fruits and nuts, which their large bills are well adapted for breaking into. Many species, however, are also very adept at breaking into other birds' nests and stealing and consuming the eggs and chicks, and they are also capable of taking on smaller animals as well, as is the case with the somewhat unique ground hornbill of Africa. As its name somewhat implies, this large species actually patrols on the ground for its prey, which includes anything from large insects to small vertebrates, including frogs, mice, and various other small vertebrates, even including some species of snakes, using its large pointed beak to puncture and snatch small animals from the ground. The pointed tip of a hornbill's beak is very good for stabbing or puncturing through objects, but they also have distinctive serrations or grooves along the upper and lower mandible, as can be seen by many species. These serrations enable a hornbill to tear apart its food more effectively, though they could also make for a somewhat more effective bite if used in defensive purposes, for example. The cask on a hornbill's head varies in size depending on the species. In fact, in some species it's barely visible but this particular feature is largely hollow inside, and on the exterior it is reinforced by keratin, the same feature found covering the bird's beak. In the case of the hornbill, it is connected to the upper mandible. In order to support such a large bill and a helmet-like cask on their heads, hornbills have especially powerful neck muscles, and they are the only birds known to have the first and second vertebrae of their necks being fused together, which provides a more stable platform for their skull. Both a hornbill's beak and its helmet-like headgear are used for a variety of different purposes, particularly courtship and display, as they are brightly coloured, and in some species the hollow cask on their head is believed to act almost like a resonating chamber, amplifying the bird's calls through the forested habitats in which many species live. When used in both self-defence and intraspecies combat, the hornbill's beak is quite the formidable weapon. Many hornbill species, particularly the great hornbill pictured here, are well known to engage in mutual jousting, where they essentially wrestle using their beaks. This usually happens, for example, when two male birds are fighting for the right to mate with a female, or they are battling over territorial space. Both birds will usually approach each other on the same perch, such as a branch, although they will sometimes engage in these aerial jousts while they are both flying, where they will lock their powerful bills together and will essentially wrestle with each other until one bird wins over the other in a test of strength. While these aerial wrestling matches can be impressive to watch, there is one hornbill species that takes aerial combat to quite an interesting and crazy extreme. 
The helmeted hornbill is a particularly large and distinctive species found in the Malay Peninsula, along with Sumatra, Borneo, Thailand and Myanmar. Compared to many other species of larger hornbills, it has quite a short beak in comparison to its skull size, although the helmet on its head is particularly pronounced, hence its name. On the exterior, it remains a brightly coloured structure used for display purposes, but inside it is somewhat different to other hornbill species, which enables it to use its cask somewhat differently. Like other species, the exterior of the cask is covered in a keratinized, almost beak-like covering, but inside it is actually a solid structure rather than being hollow. In fact, in life, the skull of the helmeted hornbill, including both the bill and the cask with the solid base inside, can account for more than 10% of the bird's total body weight. This solid keratin structure is referred to as hornbill ivory, and starts out growing a bright yellowish colour, but when the bird rubs its cask against its preen gland, that is a gland on its rump that dispenses an oil used to waterproof its feathers and adorn them with a specialised colour, the top of the cask adorns a more reddish tinge over time. Having such a solid, almost dome-like structure on the top of their head, in comparison to the more spongy interior of other hornbill casks, seems to help enable the helmeted hornbill to engage in a sort of conflict behaviour that is not seen in almost any other species, with the exception of potentially the great hornbill. Like other hornbill species, the helmeted hornbill, particularly males, will engage in aerial jousting matches, but instead of using their beaks to wrestle with one another, they actually fly headfirst into each other, colliding with quite a violent blow, before flying around and repeating the process. The idea of these colourful birds essentially ramming into each other headfirst in mid-flight is quite a crazy thing to imagine, and to see it might be reminiscent in many ways of what has been theorised of the behaviour of extinct dinosaurs like the Pachycephalosaurus, which in many ways is more closely related to these birds than any of the mammals that engage in similar behaviours alive today, such as bighorn sheep, for example. Sadly, however, the powerful and colourful headgear of the helmeted hornbill has put them in grave danger of extinction in recent years. With their status currently listed as critically endangered, these birds, as previously mentioned, are a source of hornbill ivory, which has been heavily poached for in a similar way to how elephants have been poached for their ivory. These birds are also threatened by habitat loss caused by heavy deforestation in Southeast Asia where they are native to. In contrast, woodpeckers as a whole are a much more common and frequently sighted species, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, including the UK and in North America. Many are familiar with the woodpecker's striking coloration, distinctive sounds and their affinity towards wooded habitats. But some may not fully realise the ingenious adaptations and physical durability of these rather common birds. As their name implies, woodpeckers are best known for their drumming behaviour, that is when they essentially use their long straight beak to drill into the base of a tree trunk or branch. Many species will strike their beak hard against wood to create a sound used to communicate with other members of their own kind, and they also do this in search of food, for example foraging for insects and grubs beneath the bark. Along with being used to create holes in trees suitable for nesting, it's safe to say a woodpecker's beak is a very valuable and effective tool in this regard. But what's truly impressive is the force and intensity in which many species will hammer away at a tree base with their bill, basically headbanging against a tree multiple times a second. Sometimes a woodpecker's head will essentially strike a tree base at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour multiple times per second, which is estimated to be the equivalent of a human being running head first at full speed into the tree trunk, which would obviously have a very bad outcome. So how can these birds drill away at a tree with such intensity and force and not suffer brain damage or concussions the way other animals would do if they did the same thing? Well, along with having simply a very powerful beak, woodpeckers have a range of adaptations that enable them to withstand these forces. 
It becomes even more peculiar when you look at a woodpecker's skull, such as this one, and you notice a strange thin rod-like structure around the skull. Believe it or not, this bizarre structure actually contains the woodpecker's tongue and protects it when it's not in use. Yes, woodpeckers literally have their tongue wrapped around their skull. A woodpecker's tongue, along with its beak, is a valuable tool when it comes to foraging and feeding. In fact, the bird with the longest tongue in relation to its body in the world belongs to a woodpecker, the northern flicker, a rather small North American species with a tongue over five inches long. Most species use their tongue to probe in holes they have drilled in the wood in search of food, and sometimes even appear to have a harpoon-like tip to skewer small invertebrates before ingesting them. A few species of woodpecker even behave in a way reminiscent of anteaters and will forage for ants on the ground, including the fairly common green woodpecker, which can be found here in the UK, which uses its long tongue to probe through ant hills and tunnels in search of its prey. The tongue of a woodpecker certainly is a very interesting piece of anatomy, but how does this relate to its ability to resist concussions when drumming into trees? The long, thin, tubular bones that wrap around a woodpecker's head that contain its tongue are the hyoid bones, which is unusual considering that in a human, our hyoid is tiny and horseshoe-shaped. As well as storing and protecting the bird's tongue, these hyoid bones are also believed to play a part in resisting the concussive forces of a woodpecker's head banging. This unusual structure actually appears to contract and pulse every time a woodpecker's beak strikes against something, which helps hold the bird's cranial structure in place, resisting possible damage or injury. Woodpecker heads also have areas of spongy tissue combined with the muscles of their jaws, which act as shock absorbers, and they are able to flex and move their upper and lower jaws somewhat independently, which also helps as shown by this image. Features of the woodpecker's brain also help in resisting concussions, as compared to a human's, they are considerably smaller and they're positioned further back in the skull. They also appear not to be as free-floating as a human brain, which reduces the chances of the brain striking against the skull during a sudden jolt, which in turn is what causes concussions. With all these features combined, along with maybe a few others, woodpeckers are able to hammer away into a tree with their literal face, and they seldom ever get concussions or brain damage as a result. This may not necessarily count as a formidable form of avian weaponry, but it certainly is an interesting topic to discuss, as woodpeckers are certainly much more resourceful and durable birds than they get credit for. In one of my previous videos about avian anatomy and weaponry, I discuss various species of birds with unusual spiked wings, this includes species such as the spur-winged goose, the southern screamer from South America, and the spur-winged plover, which all have sharp spurs on their wings, which they can use in self-defense and combat if needed. But over the course of their long history, birds have developed various kinds of anatomical features to their wings that are even stranger than this one, whether used for weaponry or other purposes. The Hoatzin is a colourful, roughly pheasant-sized bird found in the tropical areas of South America, most notably the Amazon. By bird standards, it is fairly ordinary looking, and is mostly a vegetarian feeding on leaves in the treetops. As an adult bird, it has fully formed wings which are fully functional and feathered, and appear completely normal at first glance. As a flyer, it is a somewhat cumbersome and sluggish bird, described as flying more like a lumbering cargo plane than a superjet. Their chicks, however, have wings that are so strange looking that they are almost reminiscent of their dinosaurian heritage, and quite unlike any other bird in the world. Hoatzin chicks are born with a pair of sharp hooked claws on each wing at a very young age, and at quite an early stage in their lives, they are capable of clambering out of their nest in the treetops and moving around arboreally with surprising confidence for such a young bird. Their sharp claws, both on their hind feet which can grip, but especially on their front wings, are very effective climbing tools, and are very reminiscent in their shape and appearance to those of dinosaurian ancestors like Archaeopteryx. 
However, these strange grasping clawed wings are very unique only to very young Hoetzin, and as they age, they actually lose them altogether. The wing claws are reabsorbed gradually as the birds grow, and the digits that support them also shrink, along with the fact that their wings gradually grow larger and larger feathers. By the time the birds reach maturity, they have no traces of this strange youthful trait. Like with the woodpeckers, this feature is not necessarily a form of avian weaponry per se, but it still is a strange and interesting form to discuss about. Penguins are without question one of the most adored birds around, and they are well known for their affinity to cold climates and coastal habitats where they are excellent swimmers. But what some may not know is the surprising physical strength and hardiness of these birds. As birds that spend most of their time hunting for prey in the water, penguins have repurposed their wings into strong flippers. Penguins have also repurposed the same muscles other birds use for flying, their strong pectoralis muscles that is, that attach to the breastbone or sternum, power their flippers at high speed underwater. A penguin's skeletal system is also quite different to that of other bird species, usually in the fact that their bone structure is consistently denser and heavier, which enables them to counteract buoyancy, though it's also largely because they no longer have the need to remain lightweight for flight. These features combine with other adaptations including strong webbed feet and plumage that keeps them both insulated and streamlined makes penguins fantastic swimmers. Some of these adaptations, however, also make penguins surprisingly formidable and more than capable of looking after themselves if they need to. The wings of a penguin may lack the claws or spurs discussed in other species previously, but they are still very powerful. The wing of a penguin is much more straight and stiff in comparison to that of other bird species at their basic level, thanks to various bones and joints stiffening and fusing over time which combined with the increased density of the penguin's skeletal system makes their wing essentially solid in structure. With wings made out of essentially solid bone, unlike in other birds, a penguin's flippers, despite looking rather comical, can be a surprisingly effective offensive or defensive weapon given the circumstances. Many species are observed engaging in intraspecies combat, and they'll also use their flippers defensively as well. With flippers made out of solid bone and a strong beak filled with papillae or backward pointing spines used to grip fish, penguins can be surprisingly formidable with some species such as these Humboldt penguins engaging in quite brutal and even bloody fights over nesting or mating rights. They will bite and grab at each other's faces with their sharp beaks and then pummel each other with their powerful flippers, sometimes drawing blood. While battles between penguins seldom reach this kind of extreme very often, the point is they are much more powerful and durable birds capable of looking after themselves than they are often portrayed to be. Birds that have modified their wings as clubs or other kinds of battering weapons are actually not unheard of, and a few species actually used them in the past as well as during modern day. Xenocybis is an extinct form of flightless ibis native to the islands of Jamaica. It was large among ibis species, weighing over 2 kilograms, and along with being flightless, it had quite an unusual anatomical feature, club-like wings which were too short for flight, but useful for potential pummeling. In most modern bird species, they have a wing in which they have three digits at the end, a protruding thumb, and two fused fingers at the end which form an attachment point for feathers and other tissue. This area of Xenocybus's wings, however, are much more inflated with bony tissue, making them considerably broader and much more resilient. With these sturdy wings with almost solid club-like ends, many paleontologists have speculated that this ancient species of flightless ibis used its wings to literally batter its opponents, likely engaging in intraspecies combat, where two males, for example, fight for the right to mate with females. This has been supported by Xenocybis remains found with injuries to the wings that could have only been caused if they were used as weapons. Some bones even display fracture calluses, where the bones have essentially healed after they've been injured in life. 
Xenocybis would have also likely used its clubbed wings as a form of physical defence. After all, it did live alongside a few fierce predators, including a giant species of flightless caracara that roamed the island in a similar manner to today's African secretary birds. Either way, this particular species was certainly not the gracile, harmless kind of ibis we associate with today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. I know this channel is mostly focused on birds of prey and falconry, but I'm also interested in a wide range of birds, both alive and extinct, as well as various other prehistoric creatures and various aspects on anatomy. So this video hopefully will be interesting to some who are not quite as focused on the falconry content should they encounter this channel. Thanks again and I'll see you all in the next one.